Last week, where were we? Kentucky, the Bluegrass State, and we were having a blast with Ron, Lisa, Hoppy, Susan, a everybody. Blast. I get what you did. Blast. A blast. A blast. With our there was a, it was a smoking time. It was awesome. No, actually, it was. It was a lot of fun. Yep. And this week, we're heading right back to the Bluegrass, Bluegrass State. Wow, we're just having trouble fun saying to me. that. Yeah, wow. Anyways, back down there, same crew, and just some more hunting to go on and some more fun mm -hmm. going. A lot more fun. Yeah. What'd you think? Oh, I always have a blast. Yeah? Yeah, it was my first time really in Kentucky, but... It was? Yeah. It's always fun with Hop and Ron. Yeah, oh my gosh. And yeah. Miss Lisa. You guys just like it because I'm like the target of everything. Well, they do. They definitely torment Ralph. And I'm Vicky. I'm RJ. And I'm Ralph, the one that gets beat up mentally and physically every single week. And this is The Choice. As the hunt with Ron, Hoppy, and the whole gang continues, the Ciencerulos look forward to not only continuing to fill tags, but more importantly, spending time with friends and family to create lasting memories that can be cherished for a lifetime. Already in the books for this whitetail hunt is Ralph with a fantastic Kentucky eight point. You can't get a more perfect date. Here in Kentucky with Ron and Lisa, Hoppy, Susan, Vicky, RJ, Eddie, Brandon, and myself. Hoppy was also able to bag himself a doe that will soon be processed along with all the other game for families of the 101st Airborne Division, the only air assault division of the United States Army with a combat record spanning from the paratroopers of World War II to the security force assistance teams deployed in Afghanistan today. With tags still left to fill, Vicky is in the field early and will be sitting in one of her favorite stands. So this is actually my stand. I've shot a buck here a couple years ago, last year. Um, Ralph is already hunted out of it. Hoppy's already hunted out of it. Now it's my turn finally to hunt out of my blind. Finally. We got a muddy walk in. We're gonna get in there, get set up, probably put the heater on, and um, hopefully shoot a buck this month. As daylight arrives, so does a group of turkeys. Knowing full well Vicky doesn't have a turkey tag, the birds stick around for a while to taunt Vicky until the close of the morning sit. One of the many benefits of traveling the globe to hunt is being able to get a glimpse of local history and in this case, a unique geological site. Taking a brief break from hunting, everyone packs up and visits a local cave not far from Ron's house. Well, we're here with Mr. Ron, and he just showed us this beautiful little place. I'm standing under a huge rock right now, and uh, the river literally comes out of the earth. It shoots just straight back into the earth, and it's just incredible. Caves are formed when groundwater makes its way along passages and rocks, paving the way for the formation of a particular type of landscape called karst, which is produced as a result of the chemical reaction of water, air, soil, and rock. This flowing water becomes acidic and seeps through naturally occurring cracks in the rock, dissolving into broad passageways that are further widened and connected to create extensive underground drainage systems that will eventually grow into what we now call solution caves. Kentucky and other similar landscapes represent massive solution caves, characterized by some of the most extensive karst landscapes in the U.S. That was awesome. We just, we just stopped and looked at a river. That was coming out of the earth. <laughs> This morning we're waiting for more to come in right now we're hearing gunshots all around us and we got one little spike buck under under the trees ahead of us so hopefully we're gonna get some more coming in here shortly the sun just came up not too long ago hopefully uh they start moving now get one down. getting up in the blind was really kind of neat ron placed everything perfectly and from what we've heard is that little view that we have is the spot 
So we sit and wait. Soon, a potential shooter buck begins approaching, so RJ readies his traditions for a shot. But as more deer enter the area, a clear ethical shot becomes difficult, so RJ must wait for the opportune moment. I'm getting excited, and I choose my pick and I take my shot. fire from traditions and I mean this thing just probably I don't know 50 yards 40 50 yards and just collapsed <laughs> let's go <No. laughs> and if you wonder what that little mouse squeak was yes that was Brandon <laughs> <I> was <excited. laughs> let's go no. <laughs> after a shot RJ gives things a chance to cool down and surprisingly many of the deer stick around in the same spot as where I killed my buck, I had the exact same opportunity with the doe. You honor. You ready? RJ's got a buck down. Yes! Wait. What? He says doe down. <laughs> so, wait. Uh, did he think it was a buck and now it's a doe? Or does he have a buck and a doe? All right, we get a text, okay? And RJ <laughs> says, um, I shot a buck. And a it buck down. A buck down, a buck down. Yeah, right? 30 minutes later. Yep. Doe down. And a doe down. <laughs> So we're, we're, like, we're sitting in the blind right there, not even 100 yards away. Yeah. Well, all right, let's go so get this, it. So yeah. I think it's the first time I've ever shot two deer in one morning. I get it. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> yeah, so so I. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It might be a Steve deer. Uh-oh. Huh? It's a Steve deer. What? I can't. It's a Steve deer. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so wrong in so many ways. That's I'm a big like, doe. it is a beautiful. Oh gosh! You wait. We got to take a picture here, Steve dear. I've, I've had in my backpack every morning. Good <laughs> doe. Beautiful, beautiful doe. How much of that doe is 160 pounds? Oh yeah, it's a. She came in. I was like, oh, yep. Now we're shooting that one. <laughs> oh, hey, there. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Perfect shot, dude! See, the nitro fire did the job. <laughs> Look at his frame. Nice. Oh, yes! Oh, I have, we have, I have you got pictures of him. of him. Look at how beat up he is. Yeah, he's, he's a cool deer. deer. Man, he's a fighter. Well, this was an absolutely amazing week and get not only a doe, but a buck as well in one morning. <laughs> And I just, I can't believe, I can't thank Mr. Ron, anybody else that helped out enough to be, let me get here. First we had a few does come in, a few bucks, a few little guys mostly, and then this guy walks in and <laughs> so uh, I get my I get my shot off. And I mean, it was just, it was a blessing this morning to be able to do that. And then not even probably 30 minutes later, I got my doe down. So thank you guys for everything, let me do this. Being able to go down there and experience all this and 
get a buck down there with the traditions as well as a doe. It was just, it was an amazing experience overall. And I can't thank Ron and everybody else that made this happen. It was just, it was incredible to be able to go down there and do this and with a muzzleloader especially. And it was just, it was awesome. To say their time in Kentucky has been a success would be an understatement. The Cianzarulos have bagged themselves many great whitetails, but some of their best experiences have yet to come. Vicki is in the stand for another evening sit, and with her time in Kentucky soon drawing to a close, she is hopeful for an opportunity with a shooter buck. We have a bunch of deer already down for management and for processing for Wounded Warrior Outdoors for families. Um, I haven't tagged a deer yet this season here in Kentucky. There was actually deer right out here in this green field before we even got up into the blind. So we just, just saw a couple more. We saw five does milling around out there. It's still pretty early. So we're just gonna sit down and see what happens. Um, I have a buck and a couple doe tags. I've got my traditions muzzle loader with me. It's been kind of foggy and chilly and damp all day long, so they may be moving all day. We'll just keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. Now, we saw a couple bucks out in front of us, but they were too far, and then all of a sudden, I look out the corner of the blind and I see a buck coming this way. It's coming towards us. And I look at Eddie and I go, listen, we need to spin around. We're gonna shoot that way instead because if he comes close enough, we're taking him. The buck is slowly making its way in, but light is fading fast. A few more deer approach the buck, making for a difficult shot for Vicky. After some brief sparring with another buck, this shooter makes its way back in, finally giving the opportunity she needs. That deer walked all the way in, gave me the opportunity, and I took him. Bam! <laughs> he didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. Come on, give me knuckles, no? Yes. Isn't that cool? Come on. Well, we're gonna lose light fast, but it's okay because we don't have to we don't have to go track my buck. He's laying right there. I can see him. He went right there. I gave Ralph and Ron a call. They're gonna pack up a buggy, they're gonna come in and get it. It's pretty soggy and muddy in here, so we don't want to bring any of our trucks in here. But I told them, we're going to go check out that buck before they get here. I just filmed my Kentucky muzzleloader buck tag. This is a beautiful, this buck, he's wide. He's stork wheezed at that little eight. Oh, look at him. Nice. Nice buck. Beautiful. It's my exit. Beautiful Kentucky eight point. He is pretty. What a day, this is awesome. We are going to, I just have to call him in. I gotta go online and tag him that way. A beautiful buck, good meat, good eating. We're gonna have the ladies from the Wounded Warrior Outdoors. The wives are gonna come out and help us uh, process all this game tomorrow. So we have plenty of good meat for them. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you, Ron, thank you, Lisa, Happy Susan, everyone. Beautiful buck here in Kentucky. <laughs> Everyone in camp is filling tags and we're hanging meat up waiting for it to get processed. Now one of the really neat things here also is that Ron, he works with Wounded Warrior Outdoors. He started Wounded Warrior Outdoors and all the deer, that we, pro that we go ahead and we get off of this property, we process for Wounded Warrior Outdoor families. This year, it's the 101st Airborne Families right there located nearby where we're hunting in Kentucky.
We have a whole processing crew getting ready to go ahead and process this deer. I mean, we have someone's cutting it up in chunks. We're adding some pork to it. Someone's throwing it through the grinder. We're making plenty of, of burger for sandwiches, for hamburgers, for spaghetti, tacos, whatever it is you want. You get what I'm saying? We're making some great fresh meat for these families. You know, with being my age and really just kind of getting into the processing of the meat and being able to experience kind of everything that goes in from getting it from the harvest to being in front of you on a plate to eat, it's, it's been awesome to be able to learn all this and I'm still learning a lot more. And hopefully you guys keep watching and learn with me because there's, there's so much to learn from all these different people that we meet and there's just so much knowledge behind everyone. So join me in my journey as I'm learning and experiencing all these new things and I'm definitely gonna make mistakes, but that's how you learn. To have the privilege and the honor to turn around and to be able to supply food to the families of the 101st Airborne, it just doesn't get no better. It's truly something that we as hunters have the ability to do and this is what we need to do more of. We need to help those first responders. We need to help our military. We need to help our police forces. We need to embrace them and say, listen, we hunters, we're here for you. Just like they're here for us. With how tight knit this community is, with between the Warriors with Ron and the community just coming together, especially whenever the Warriors are out here, it's amazing to be able to experience kind of how, how these little communities can help each other and how they'll shut down the town for when these warriors come in, they'll cook for them, they'll do all of this other stuff. And while we were here, we had the opportunity of JR and his family members to come in and cook catfish for us. And I will admit, it is the best catfish I've ever had. The size, the inches, the scores, the age, really doesn't matter anymore. It's about that, those memories, you know, creating them with your family and your friends and sharing that camaraderie. That's what this hunt's all about, as most hunts. Please embrace it for what it is. And we would love to give you all um, the flag from the 101st. Oh my gosh. Um, for you guys to take that home. And well, thank you. Home. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. So much uh, for, um, I mean, giving us all the meat. We're yeah, so excited. You guys excited. got plenty of Oh it. my That's gosh, awesome. that will fly so, proud in you. Colorado right there. Good. Start realizing that the true record book that matters is that family experience, is that camaraderie with friends. Folks, that's what the hunting lifestyle is all about. You know, that is a total wrap of our Kentucky bluegrass hunt. And I'm telling you, every year we go down there, we have a blast. Absolutely. Oh, that was my first time, but well, yes, it was a blast. Isn't it? It's just yes. incredible that just everything about that. You know, you know, Ron and Lisa actually years ago started an organization called yes. WWO, called Wounded Warrior Outdoors and Enabled Outdoors. Yep. They have been a godsend for wounded warriors across our nation. They have, they have, just to give you an idea, they actually are about like 97%, right, rated. That means that almost every single dollar that is raised goes back to getting a warrior either hunting or fishing. Gets them out of the facilities and gets them out into the nature and the natural situations to where they can go ahead and help overcome the situations that they have going mm -hmm. on. Whether That's physical or mental. Exactly. Right. And exactly. And Ron and Lisa, you guys are amazing. The whole crew at Wounded Warrior Outdoors is amazing. And I mean, Poppy and Susan, they take the time at their ranch to, you know, to, to assist, not only to assist, but also invite warriors down. I mean, we are, we are humbled, we are honored, and we're so privileged that we call these folks friends and family. And, and to, to be part of all of what they've created is just, it's a god dang blessing. It is. So we're glad that you guys made your choice. The choice. We'll see you guys next week. God bless you all.